So this is where I do all my research. So I've got my laptop out, and what I'll do is I will. This is the cool. Yeah, that works. Essentially, little one's down for a nap. Um, Fiance is at work, so I just um, basically sit here and do my research. So I'll research everything from breeding crickets successfully. What else? Um, different diets, different things I can do, different stimulus I can add. Um, I get a lot of ideas as well for content, my next video, what I should do, and also just enrichment for my animals. So for example, you know, uh, to be honest, I spent hours and hours, a lot of my time actually the last few weeks before I got survived at the Blue Tongue was researching compatibility with other animals. And I know people around the world do it. They keep blue tongues and better dragons and cream skinks and shinglebacks and water dragons all like I've seen them in massive pens together so you can do it I suppose for me it was just more around you know specifically to cutting skinks and blue tongues so far they're doing great and then just making sure that I've got the right parameters right size and just things to be mindful of I mean I was always going to be prepared for the situation right I have like four spear enclosures so if Savannah was having massive issues with the two skinks after day one or day four day seven or whatever it may be I've got options, I can separate them. And that's the biggest advice I'll give any reptile keeper is make sure you have capacity to separate animals, right? Nothing worse than animals fighting. Just like dogs and cats at home, they start fighting, you start, it's a bit hard with dogs and cats, you just have to get to a point where you either just they get used to each other or they just keep fighting or, I don't know, how dogs an idiot, always chasing their cats around. But with reptiles, you don't have that luxury because, you know, for example, my fox terrier won't he won't try and fight the cats till death, and they, to be fair, they beat him up half the time. And he's a bit of a he's a bit of a wimp, but with reptiles, it's different. Like blue tongues and cunning skinks, they cunning skinks will literally fight till death, to some extreme, right? Like get like, I've had blue tongues in the past where I've put three together, left for the day, thinking it'd be okay, and I come back and there's blood, not death, but just blood. Like one of the blue tongues was super aggressive and he was just ripping the others to shreds so i had to separate them straight away it was a bit of a nightmare but i learned my lesson i was young i was 17 now we're at a different stage of my life where i'm like okay well you just have to be more strategic more careful and more practical with what you keep how many you keep and make sure you have space for everyone so they can live in a happy family so research and my peppermint tea delicious so picking up my blue tongue today which i'm super excited about and you can see look at these using my little gear stick yeah. So uh, I've gone to these uh, video styles vlogging, <laughs> just supposed to be more of like a day in the life of, or kind of like my vlogging series of me doing certain things and me on my journey to being an ectotherm content creator, as well as, you know, achieving my goals in regards to, um, well, I don't want to give too much away for this channel, but anyway, I started YouTube, started my YouTube channel because I love ectotherms, uh, you know, I've been passionate about them my whole life, so I thought, and I love YouTube, and I've always wanted to have a channel, so when I was much younger, I was like, oh man, I'd love to start filming and doing stuff on YouTube, but, you know, what do you do? You don't, you don't want to just do, I mean, you can really, you can literally start any channel you like, and you can film anything, but I suppose for me, it just made more sense, because I had a niche, I had an idea, I have a topic, and I have a passion, which is, makes it so much easier to film. So I'm picking up my blue tongue today. Blue tongue is a new addition for me, not with regards to first time I've ever had one, but a new addition to my ectotherm journey lately, or as of now. I had, I've had multiple blue tongues throughout my life, especially when I was younger. I stopped keeping ectotherms. For those that are new watching this, uh, ectotherms are basically cold-blooded animals, essentially, right? So reptiles, amphibians, fish, invertebrate, um, like you know, insects, um, shrimp, crabs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera pretty sure that covers it and gives you an idea but when I say ectotherms for me personally like I love all ectotherms but for me I keep you know reptiles amphibians so tree frogs skinks geckos etc uh, newts um, and I have fish as well I'd love to get actually like a freshwater tank going with some shrimp freshwater shrimp but we'll see maybe in the near future anyway I had blue tongues when I was younger and I've just returned to them and I've always wanted a communal pit so a communal pit meaning that I've got multiple animals that can be housed together in a large environment to kind of make it more I suppose natural right rather than them being in terrarium something outside or it doesn't need to be outside but just like a huge pit I've got Cunningham skinks currently in a large pit environment so you know stay tuned why uh, did I stop keeping ectotherms well, I went to university and then I started traveling the world. So I went and lived abroad twice. I also did lots. I was doing lots and lots of traveling and I was moving around quite a lot. So when you're younger, I suppose, having 
a lot of pets is probably not a great thing because someone has to look after them so for me it made sense to kind of put a pause on it and uh, to be honest at that point I never knew if I'd come back to it or not I thought I'd grow out of it because it was like a hobby when I was a kid so like a lot of hobbies you do grow out of them as you get older you get different priorities but I just haven't I haven't grown out of it I'm still super passionate about it I love having them in captivity I love the animals you know I still go to zoos and wildlife parks and I'm just instantly attracted to the aquarium sections the ectotherm sections it's just where I spend most of my time I love I don't know these animals just fascinate me right they just they're super interesting um, they're really really unique they're super underrated uh, as pets as well and the reason why I say that is they're so easy now some of them are easy and some are a lot more complex for example uh, blue tongues are easy in this part of the world meaning that I can keep them outside all year round they'll hibernate in the winter they'll sleep for three months I mean I've got three months off don't have to do anything just keep an eye on them every couple of weeks make sure that they still are alive basically or in the same spot that they were so they are in a state of hibernation that's it really really low maintenance you know uh, blue tongues and cunning skinks and shungle backs uh you know animals in that, that large skink family they're omnivores as well so they eat scrambled eggs they eat fruit they eat uh, vegetables they eat mescaline salad they eat leafy greens they eat um, some flowering so and insects of course so it can give them a varied diet meaning that you don't just have to have them insects and insects are super expensive i've talked about this in my first episode so uh for me you know having the blue tongue back is uh, i've just simplified i've got an additional animal but i haven't made my life too hard at the same time now what's a hard ectotherm amazon dart frogs super popular in uh, north america uh, we can't get them here in this part of the world bottom of the world can't have them here as pets but they're popular overseas and they're quite complicated because they need a lot of humidity and they need warm temperatures so there i can only imagine that their setup would have to have misting a uh, fogger you'd need like warm temperatures in the room or in the enclosure they need uvb they need a lot of vegetation so they need these real like heavily planted paludariums and the perfect parameters so you'd need to look after them consistently they also don't hibernate like they will live they just live all year round so meaning that you need to feed them you know, every you know if not every day then every second or third day at least but bare minimum so very a lot harder to just leave them and go right or not have to worry about them for a few months that's why i love tortoises blue tongues and killing them skinks in this country because they just hibernate which is great great it's good for them as well it's part of the natural cycle and tortoises as they get older actually need to hibernate if you want them to breed same with blue tongues same with cutting up skinks they need that hibernation period if you want them to breed otherwise they just think that like nothing it, 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 it triggers their reproductive process so to speak to simplify it that's why i'm getting blue tongue as well again uh, to simplify oh, i can't even turn left here what the yeah but also not just to simplify it selfishly it's also because i want another other blue tongue again i think they're awesome the fact that they're blue tongues they're bigger animals as well i like big animals big reptiles they're cool it's like the biggest we can go here um well sorry we can get australian water dragons which get pretty large as well the males get big but water dragons once again complex more complex anything with water is complex now i have newts i have a fish tank and yeah i'm not lie. It's a bit more work so for me i've just stuck to the one nano tank for now because like i said i want to reduce it as much as possible in regards to um, the amount of husbandry i have to do and maintenance but hey who knows and then in the near future or in the future if this becomes my full-time gig then the more animals the better i suppose um i'd love i've got so many project ideas in my head like animals and fish like make these cool environments and test how to care for certain things and even getting real intricate with fish species Etc, etc. so i've got great ideas and i've got a lot of ideas but also i'm very limited to time and my time is precious because i have a you know i still have a career i have a daughter and i have a partner and i like to do other things like exercise and go to the gym and fun functional fitness and socialize and travel as well so when we do travel i'm very uh, cryptic with and strategic with how we do it so i don't make it life hard at all it's if we want to travel we travel i just make sure i get a house sitter who has experience with reptiles or i just knows how to basically um, figure out a timer and top up waters and feed things that need feeding etc etc but you know it's, it's it's not hard I suppose you really start to complicate your life when you're getting into a lot of animals like a lot of animals like some of these YouTube channels they've got hundreds of animals and that's where it's like mate at that point can you even go on holiday and if you get, and if you do go on holiday you need like one of your mates who has experience with these animals to start doing that stuff because that's just I can't even imagine a house that I found on craigslist coming in being like 
what do I have to do with these dart frogs every day? Yeah. So anyway. So yeah. So I, I suppose what am I what am I getting to at that point? Uh, reptiles and amphibians um, aren't that hard. They really aren't. You just have to know the basics, the fundamentals, and it's like a once you get the process set up, once you get a rhythm and routine, it's really easy. Like for example, my daily routine is 20 30 minutes with all my animals max that's it like that's like um so it's replacing water feeding if i need to feed and just any maintenance or cleaning if required that, that's it like that, and, and that's not a lot of time when people think it's like hours and hours it really isn't like the more animals you get you know just extending out that 20 30 minutes but it's once you get that rhythm i think when you first start you think you have to do everything so you're like oh man i have to like clean them fully out every day so yeah people are saying that it takes them like hours every week or like you know a couple hours every day for two or three animals i'm like what are you what are you doing maybe, oh maybe i'm just a bad keeper and i'm not vigorous enough but you know i've been doing this since i was like 10 years old um, and i'm like 35 so maybe i know maybe i mean but i'm always keen to learn i'd love to hear about how people uh do their routine and do things with their animals and you know, the, the other thing as well with the pet world is that everyone has an opinion. It's very subjective. There's objective things that you can, you definitely need to take, an amount, uh, take into account, which is, you know, basic husbandry and things that they need to be healthy and thrive. For example, you know, you need to know why animals need UVB exposure. Uh, you need to know why animals need certain supplementation. You need to know how often they feed, what to feed them, all that stuff, right, to keep them alive and healthy and happy. That's the objective stuff, the stuff that you can't really have an opinion on to an extent, it's the stuff that they need because it's just science, basically. And then there's the subjective stuff. The subjective stuff is people's opinions and personal feelings about things. Like, for example, I do 30 minutes maintenance each day with 20 animals and they're thinking, oh, you're not spending enough time. You know, you should be doing so much more maintenance, etc., etc. blah, 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 blah. You know, you, you know, you're harming the animal or you're not spending enough time and all that jazz, but... Anyway, let's get this bluey out and have a gander. Here she is. She's been digging. All right, let's go out in the sun so you can actually see. She's been digging a little bit. Let's see how to get pull her out, but look at that. Gorgeous animal. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Can't see her. Oh, man, I have to clean her eyes out, man. But yeah, good size. Look at that. All right, so there's a video coming in so, uh, coming soon. And it'll just be about her first week. Oh, there it is. Look at that. That's what we know them for. That big, gorgeous blue tongue. So like I said, video coming out in her first week in her life. But let's put her away and let her hide. And it is cold. The sun's only coming up now, so the day's warming up. But hopefully she'll bask later under a heat lamp. Temporary spot. And then we'll see how she goes. Look at that. All right. Cutie. So my black soldier fly larvae arrived. We're going to crack into those suckers. And here is new addition. Gotten them a few more levels. Put this log in. Gives us getting, getting some more basking platform, but more climbing. Maybe put a bit of pot across there. Lots of hides. And all I'm going to say is it's like day four now, and they actually burrow together and sleep together. All three of them. So, so far, success. This is my black soldier fly larvae. These guys have just arrived. I'm sick of buying insects from reptiles, man. So expensive. That's why I got blue tongue again, because at least I can feed that. Um, I mean, they'll still eat insects, but not as much. Um, they get a mixed diet, like the cutting skin, so scrumbled egg, Mexican leaves, banana fruit, cat food. You know, I've got these blue tongue pellets that I got them as well, see if they eat those, but basically it's like, I don't know, like a blend, kind of like dog food and cat food, blend of all the proteins and nutrients, uh, pro, sorry, proteins and nutrients and all the good stuff that they need, but basically into a pellet form. But, I need to get these because these black soldier falabe is for my leopard geckos who need live food. Uh, cheaper than crickets. I'm trying to breed crickets. It's in my last video, so that's still going. So we'll see. See when the first pinheads hatch. But I think I'm still struggling with temperature. But I'll talk about that a little bit later. Oh man, look at that! Yum 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 yum. I will give Sprinkle some because she will be hungry. Such a gentle eater, honestly. Yeah, a little soft spot for this girl. I mean, she's, I have to hand feed her. She doesn't eat out of a bowl, which is, I don't know, weird. But still, cute, cute. Shows you, uh, shows you that, you know, you can have a gentle moment with a reptile or a lizard. Oh, there we go. 
should be loving these, man. These are really good for her. So, I think at some stage I'll probably introduce one of my other leopard geckos to our enclosure, just for maybe like an hour of socialization under obviously my supervision, just to see how they go. Here we go, good girl. So I am gonna give these guys, so the Cunningham Skinks, and who knows, even some of these guys as well, because I've got 250 of these, and it's pretty cheap. This is probably the cheapest live food you can get. Bang for your buck in New Zealand. Um, like I said, I don't like buying mealworms, these guys, you get way more, they get way more nutritional value out of these guys. And 250 for like 17 bucks is uh, a bargain considering 40 crickets is 25 bucks. So these will be, uh, you know, these will keep them going for a couple of days in regards to a live food insect variety. And then tomorrow they might have a, what I call a cleanse day where they don't eat anything and they just have obviously water available. It's like a digestion day. And day after maybe I'll give them masculine leaves and scramble an egg. We'll see. Get them started on that. So far only. I mean, the Bluey's out. I think that's, yeah, it's Dapple, the big boy. He's out. Dimple's sleeping. She's still in her hide, but it's still early and it's still cold. But where can I put this so that they can all have access to it? I'll move the water. Oh, I've got to fill up that water. There we go. They can go there. They can't get out. Lizards can see them, but we'll see. Let's clean this fresh water. Fresh water needs to be cleaned every day, obviously. Rub it up, dub. Just a quick rinse, just for the, the sake of getting them some fresh water. Oh. And then back in we go. I got some geckos today as well. The natives. Here we go. All right. Yeah. So blue tongues, Cunningham skinks, skink species. They like to borrow. Hence that I've got like a solid, I think I've got like at least three, four inches of soil base, which is good. Lots of leaves, lots of hides, lots of cover, and I've kind of kept everything flat. They're not overly arboreal at all, especially blue tongues that don't even climb. So surface area very important. This one, this this pit's quite big. It's like 1.5 by 1.5. So for three animals, probably okay for now. I will get these guys outside at some point all year round, but I don't know, three of them, they're, they're comfortable. Like I said, day four with the, yeah, we'll see. So it's interesting, eh? So I have like two heat lamps, but they still love the hot spot where the sun comes through. It comes through glass, so it's not full or any UVB, but I think it's just a warmth that they're after. They get the UVB from the lamps and the lighting. Oh, yep, she's always skittish. You get a full intro soon. I've got them just some dandelions which they will eat. I've got some silk, sorry, not some silk. I've got black soldier fly larvae in there. So blue tongues will devour that. So hopefully they get into that. We'll see. Now, obviously blue tongue known for its blue tongue, as you can see. Now, I adopted Sarah at this size, at this age. I believe in adopting because I suppose if people don't want their animal, I'd rather be the first opportunity to give them an, a home so that the animal's not a released into the wild or given into a not so desirable home and I, I suppose it kind of encourages people not to breed for the sake of breeding if you're you know struggling to rehome these animals later in life um see all that scarring on her upper back that is from breeding so she's either going to be gravid um she's right now just looks like a blue tongue like they you might say she looks pregnant but they are plump animals they're quite quite a little plump chump little tumpy stumpy little animal so you know small legs small arms decent sized tail and um a decent sized head but i mean she could be gravid if she's arrived gravid that's going to be a make a very interesting um first few months of the new year and yeah god a lot of mouths to feed i'm stressing already but anyway she's gorgeous but anyway sorry back to the scarring so what happens during breeding is that the male latches on to the females to prevent them from i suppose uh, 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 to put it in nice terms for better grip so that they're secure during mating and nothing slips or slips out or if you know i don't want to get too graphic but just holds them in place it can be a bit gnarly obviously that's from the biting of the male securing them in place locking them in place basically and uh the breeding happens obviously they're known for that gorgeous blue tongue as you can see in a second flicking it out wait for it wait for it wait for it there it is okay yeah she's new she's living with a pair of cunningham skinks so far so good we're in day four and she's she's basically she's been implemented in quite well anyway let's get her back in get her back in with these two little rascals i'll just plop her here here you go all right and she'll just chill out i kind of watch how they interact with each other just obviously a lot of supervision the last couple of days but 
things are going well. I think because, you know, they're big skink species, there's lots of space in this pit, lots of hiding places, they can all burrow, and that's the whole point. There's dirt, there's soil, there's lots of leaf litter, lots of hiding places, and two basking spots, which is good. The skinks like to bask right next to each other, so that's not an issue. I just wanted to make sure that the blue tongue was okay, but she's a good size. She's an adult. She's four years old now, so she has bred. She's a proven breeder, so hence why the male definitely had two, three weeks to have his way with her before she was relocated to me. So we'll see. That'll be a fun video and process. Stay tuned. All right, so you know what I've got here? I've got a fly trap. Now I have to get in with my hands because I've caught all of these. First of all, this fly trap. What is a fly trap? So basically you hang the sucker up with some bait and it lures flies into it, keeps them alive. Great for um, catching bait or insects for your animals, especially this for the geckos, for the tree frogs. So I don't have to keep buying it because flies are annoying. Now the bait I use, I use cooked chicken um, usually the next day or even a few days after is fine the, the, like I suppose the smellier the better um, I use I've used cat food I've used dog biscuits I've used like rotting fruit or old fruit the best is definitely meat but the reason why I'm using my hands rather than the old tip on oh, there's one flying here I'm not just to get him out wrangle him out the reason why I'm just using my hands because apart from this one fly this is kind of gross but remember to wash your hands folks is that I've caught all these like weird, I'll show you when I get them out, I've caught all these weird like, I don't know, like uh, false flies? I don't know, but they're not flies. Throw them in and they'll tumble out, but these guys are, I'll show you what I mean. They almost look like mosquitoes, but they're not mosquitoes because it's not quite, not quite mosquito season. These guys are great for the tree frogs, so that's why I'm getting them out because there's heaps of them in here and I don't want to waste the food. Um, but I have seen these guys around, they're a great option. Half them are play dead and then they like start moving around and then they start flying around. So, anyway, oh, there's an earwig in there, great. It's weird, they're like kind of play dead, like I said, and then they start moving around. I'll leave this in here because this bait is good, it's like kind of at a good, good, good um, timeline where it's getting more, more gross, I suppose, and attracting more flies. And that's not a god, honestly, hate earwigs, man, hate them. Such a painful animal to like deal with. In situations like this. Maybe I'll just get him out. Got out on his own accord through a hole. Do more I can salvage. There's a lot of dead, dead ones in here as well. That's simply because um, I've left them in here for too long, like a few de extra days. But it has been real bad weather, like so cold lately, and I wasn't expecting anything. But is he alive? Oh yeah, he's good. We've got one more. Okay, so this little bundle will go into the tree frogs. You know, the, my basically with my younger guys, the ones that have like five in there, and I've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten for five frogs, not a bad start. Let's see another one. Think about these guys as well as they're really... Here we go, I don't know if you can see that, but... Let's see how close I can get. Yeah, see? Like a weird little... Yeah, weird little fly thing. Don't know what, don't, don't know what they're called, I might have to do some research. Yeah, that's right. Attempt number three. I think the crickets have actually laid in this, so... That's exciting stuff. Oh, sorry about that. Since they've laid some eggs, um, I'm going to take this out. So. Third time lucky, and that is, I think the topsoil did not work. The cocoa fiber mix did. Yeah, there's heaps of eggs in there, so that's awesome. That's gonna work, I hope. All right, this is the third time this charm. Let's see how it goes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix, we're gonna clean out the crickets, we're gonna mix out, or change out the tub and give them, throw away the topsoil, it's a waste of time, since sitting on a heat pad. Put this on the heat pad, and God, fingers crossed, 25 adults turn into something, all right? Third, third time's the charm. I know I've said that like three times now. Uh, yeah, so let's swap it out. Let's swap it out now. You know, I don't ask for much. I just want them to breed just once. Just one time. One time. Fuck it's hot. Oh my god, we'll see. Today's is going to be a cooler day and the sun comes out scorching. I can get the, get the appropriate attire for this anyway. So I'm cleaning them out. I'm trying to like do as best practice as I can with crickets and keep them as hygienic and clean as possible. Can't lose any of these guys. I'm already down to like under 15 because they uh, they eat each other man like uh, i don't know man I, I reckon they just get they just get bored like they still eat each other man i give them so much food and i change out their food every day i give them protein i give them carrot apple i give them water tomato cucumber um but i think just yeah they just here's one like half half eaten and i do it every day as well i've got them on heat pads i think they've finally laid eggs for me which is fantastic so cocoa fiber is the go. Um, so I will leave them in there. Yeah, man, I got like under under 15 easy, if not less. But they've given me one 
lay, hopefully. See, look at that. I'll leave that for the cave wetters actually, because that's what they exactly what they'll eat. Oh, here we go. You guys alive? Oh, yep, he's still going. Well, this guy. You know, any any uneaten carcasses, I just. Oh no, there's more than there's more than fifteen. That's good. That's good. I'll count them. I'll count them at the end of this when I put them back in. Right now, I'm just trying to get them out and clean their enclosure. Anyway, it's, this is for you guys. I don't know why you're so adamant on running away. I'm giving you guys fresh bedding, fresh food, water, fresh soil. Not many people would treat crickets this well. You're not even being fed out. You guys are the breeders. I can't even afford to lose one of you. God, I've been treating you guys better than my reptiles lately in regards to like, micromanaging you guys. I still treat my reptiles well, obviously. It's just a exaggeration. I don't want to hurt your feelings. Yeah. Anyway, oh, here's one more. Oh, yep, plump, plump female. It's the females that I want. There's a couple males in there, which is good. Right, that's all dirty. Let's change that out. So I've been using this like eco-friendly um, spray. It's like tea tree and thyme, and it's all good for around animals. I mean, it's like all natural. Obviously, I'm still gonna rinse this out, but it's good to just disinfect and give this a proper clean out. Um, just because crickets are gross, man. It's so messy, eh? Grubby little, it's a grubby little, bastards so i'll do this i'll give this a good wipe out not too much don't want to get too nuclear on it i don't mind having some moisture in there because they drink it i mean i put a dish in there anyway but it's the way i see it the more moisture the better so the reason why i said i give it to the cave wetter because i've got um yeah cave wetter and they eat their diet's quite interesting so they're like they don't eat live insects they eat dead insects and they're very very adamant on it um oh, this is gonna work i need to dry this a bit more so yeah so i give them like dead any dead insects any dead carcasses of insects that i find or that i have whether it's mealworms or beetles um and that's what they'll eat nice day though so the geckos will be out today nice fresh paper towels got way too many but that's okay so what they're getting today is they're getting a paper towel base then cocoa fiber mix which is apparently the go-to so this is a like probably an inch and a half deep is perfect i'll fill it almost right to the top yeah that's plenty i think that should be it should be all good and the other key thing is to make sure that is make sure it's damp cool not too much overkill i'll place it down and the good thing is you get tupperware where you already have the lid ready to go it's got holes in it so it's fairly breathable during the incubation process and then maybe like a day or two before the eggs are expected to hatch seven day mark or ten day mark i check both i'll put them in the actual hatchling tub but i haven't gotten it yet so that's gonna be an exciting part we're getting apple we've got water they're getting cucumber so like you know obviously these fruits and veggies i give them lots of moisture right so they don't dry out they don't otherwise they're forced to eat each other apparently that's what i read i also give them this vita farm ectotherm lizard food now originally i got this for my cunningham skinks they didn't have a bar of it i've got a blue tongue now savannah you'll meet her soon i don't know if she'll eat it but what reason why, giving it, why I'm giving it to them is because it's got heaps of protein, which is good for the animals. So, whole grains, Australian beef, perfect, wheat gluten, Tasmanian mutton bird, wow, uh, fish oil, fish meal, soy protein, potato starch, um, all these vitamins, minerals. So, if they eat it, it's going to probably, um, and I sprinkle it kind of near where their food is, so they nibble on it, they're getting all the good stuff. That's it, that's the setup. All right, let's get these guys back in there. So, let's count how many I've got left. One, two, you could do this so that they have a ramp, then climb in. Three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. That's thirteen. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. All right, so from twenty-five to seventeen, that's how many I've lost. I've lost almost ten through the carnivorous slash, I don't know, they died. They're all, I got them as adults. They could have been at the end of their lifespan, to be fair, or life expectancy, but anyway. They've done one tub. I just need them to do like two more tubs for me so I have a new generation coming through and then they can all die out and rest in peace and then I can carry on and live the cricket breeding dream. Stay tuned. All right, so today, frozen berries. Got them out already. They're a little bit frozen, but I won't give it to them yet. One more thing, mescal and greens. So today they're getting kind of a healthy, get a healthy option. Now, I don't know, I don't know if you guys like this vlog style. Maybe, Hit a like down the bottom or comment if you do like the vlog style. Kind of like daily life of or daily episodes. Oh, this is the kind of stuff I like to watch on YouTube. I like to watch people actually in real life. Like their day to day, their thoughts, their feelings. No, it doesn't have to be the reptile niche. It can be anything really, but it's what I enjoy. Mescal and greens. This is for cutting M skinks and the new edition, Blue Time. Savannah, Savannah, Savannah. It's a new name. 
silly name, but my fiance liked it, so she was like, oh, that's a cute name for it. Yeah, so this is a style I like to watch, so yeah. Anyway, some nice masculine greens. Huge dish. I kind of want to see if they'll like eat together or whether they'll just pick at it. I mean, I tried two separate dishes and that'll be fine as well, but this is quite a big dish. Quite big. Nice little greens. Now, before I add the fruit, I'll sprinkle some of this calcium vitamin D3 powder. Just give them a bit of extra. Because they're not outside just yet. When they're outside, it'll be around, then they're going to get optimum UVB. But right now, they've got a UVB bulb. A couple of UVB bulbs. Heat. All right. Um, yeah, I kind of need to cut the strawberry out. It's way too big. You want it softened up, which is fine. The good thing is I'll leave this out for a bit longer just to let the fruit uh, let the fruit defrost. So frozen berries, man, good option, especially if it's not in season or if you live somewhere where the stuff's still expensive, even when it's in season. A little bit annoying, man. I remember strawberries with like two dollars fifty a punnet, man, pre-COVID, and blueberries as well. Now you go, you, man, honestly, now you go to the grocery store and you're like, what the bloody F is going on? Uh, back to the old days. Um, they're quite sport for frozen berries. They even get some raspberries, some blackberries, and some blueberries, which they'll like. Now, first time watchers, and maybe you don't know too much about reptiles, you might be thinking, hang on, why are you giving them like veggies and fruit? Well, blue tongues and cunningham skinks are omnivores, meaning that they eat a bit of everything. They eat meat, they eat insects, they eat greens, they eat vegetation, they eat fruit. These are the wild, I suppose. They're not sca they're not scavengers. Oh, that's here for our popping off. Popping off some lunch. Yep, okay, yep, we did first one. Yeah, I wouldn't say they're, they're not scavengers, they're just, I suppose, I don't know, they're not opportunists either. Or maybe they are, maybe that's how you would say it. I suppose they're just, I don't know, I'm adapted to eat a bit of everything. You know, don't rely on just one food source. And it's the way their body, you know, their body can digest it all. Whereas there's some animals like leopard geckos, you can't give them fruit. Um, they eat solely essentially insects. So, yeah, that's the difference. Anyway, like I said, look at that. Delicious. Made by Chef Max. So we'll leave that up for a little bit longer and then we'll put it in and we'll see how they go. Might not catch them eating it because I don't sit there and watch them for hours and my, they're still quite shy, so they don't come out and eat straight away. Uh, sometimes the cutting skinks do if they're basking and then I put like the bowl right below them, and especially if there's insects and they're moving around, like uh, whether it's mealworms or um, silkworms or um, soldier fly larvae, then they'll kind of jump down, they'll eat right in front of me. Um, sometimes I'll put the dish in and I come back 10 minutes later, they'll be in the mescaline greens, but sometimes I don't catch them at all and I'll come back, you know, an hour or two later and it's, it's gone. So we'll see, we'll see, hopefully. Oh, look who's hungry. He's on his new little bit of pongalog, cut off pongalog, and I put it up there because like, he loves the sun corner. This like corner gets heaps of sun and he loves it. Look at him. I have no idea. The other one's still sleeping and the blue tongue is able to be seen, but put this in the shade for now and we'll see how he goes. That looks delicious, man, honestly. Lucky boy. He's a good plump, hey? Oh, yep. This is also why I, I got a blue tongue. Um, I missed having an animal of that size that I can hold and handle. Like blue tongues, almost all of them, especially from a young age, if you handle them, like they're like leopard geckos, you can handle them throughout their life and they're really, really good to have. Whereas Cunningham skinks, man, so sketchy. The only time I can hold them is if they're like dead cold in the morning. That's it. I told you, this is their favorite spot. They can't help themselves. It's weird because it's like just, essentially it's just sun or heat through glass, which isn't UVB, but it's warming them up. They've got the UVB in the corner, but at least they're getting nice and warm. I have no idea where Savannah is. Who bloody knows?